Jenom Hoske Nerugaba, the Chief of Defense Forces, who is also the Senior Presidential Advisor for Special Operations, highlights the history of cooperation and mutual support between the UPDF and NDF influenced by their national interests and regional security dynamics. The past 2,000 years, we know from history that there was trade going on with the Aksum Empire as far back as 100 AD. The cultural and genetic links with Ethiopia are too many uh, to enumerate. So the relationship is first and foremost one of blood and one of a long shared history. He notes that this cooperation has been reinforced by high-level visits and bilateral talks between military leaders from both countries. Problems because everybody speaks to me in Amharic or, or Oromo, thinking I'm from there. Of course, the Uganda People's Defense Force and the Ethiopian National Defense Force have a history of cooperation and mutual support influenced by our respective national interests and the regional security dynamics. Both countries have contributed troops to African Union and United Nations peacekeeping missions, particularly in Somalia through Amazon and Atims. Jeno Kinerugaba commended the military training exchange and extended an invitation to end F officers to participate in UPDF courses in Uganda. Now the African Transitional Mission in Somalia, ATMIS. Uh, our, our involvement in AMISOM and ATMIS has, necess has necessitated close coordination and collaboration between our two militaries. Phil Marshall Bahanu expressed his desire to strengthen cooperation and explore new adventures of partnership. Growing stronger, we have worked together on numerous initiatives, including a <clears throat> memorandum of understanding on defense cooperation that focuses on areas such as military training, technical cooperation. The meeting was attended by senior UPDF and NDF officers, including the commander UPDF Air Force, Lieutenant General Charles Okidi, Chief of Joint Staff Major General Jack Bakasomba, and the Chief of Defense Intelligence and Security, Major General James Virongi. The Chief of General Staff of NDF was accompanied by the Ambassador of Ethiopia to Uganda, His Excellency Bezabi Teganet Yemen, generals and senior officers of the trial of Molly Katanga, who together with four other suspects accused of killing Henry Katanga in November last year, has started. The criminal division of the High Court presided over by Justice Isaac Mwata has allowed the prosecution to amend the charge sheet by adding more charges to the four accused of the murder of Henry Katanga in November 2023. In this case, all the report intended in a criminal trial. Second, even in this case, there exists no conflict of interest of an advocate client nature of an advocate client nature between Ms. Samari and accused persons. The charges that have been added to the charge sheet include destroying evidence and being accessories in the murder. They cannot make an application asking 
hawasili ya kodini who is actually the lead prosecutor in this matter to the choose us and before court makes a pronouncement they shoot up and start directing court on how it should proceed and also we take exception and i fought and pray my lord The four accused are the two daughters of Katanga, a house helper and a nurse. According to the prosecution, on November 2, 2023, at Tratu Road in Imbuya, Nakawa Division, with malice of forethought, Molly Katanga killed her husband, Henry Katanga. Molly's two daughters, Patricia Kakwanzi and Martha Nkwanzi, whom she is jointly charged with, deny the charges of destroying and tampering with valuable evidence that would have been used in the judicial trial to prove the murder of their father. On the other hand, the family's chamber boy, George Amanire, and a nursing officer, Charles Otai, have been charged with being an accessory. However, they have also denied these charges. Molly Katanga, who attended the trial in person, was wheeled to court in a wheelchair by the Safety and Security Unit, the Allied Force of the Prison Services. She yesterday asked the court to allow her attend hearing on Zoom due to her medical condition. Molly's attempts to secure bail have been unsuccessful. On April 9, 2024, Judge Mowata denied her bail due to a lack of proof of exceptional circumstances, including the absence of a medical report from the prison indicating that her condition could not be managed. A second bail application was made on April 15, 2024, following a medical examination by the Uganda Prison Service, which stated that monitoring Molly's illness was beyond their capacity. Molly suffers from hypertension with multiple breast masses, paranososinostis, vertigo, and post-traumatic stress disorder. The Confederation of Pentecostal and Evangelical Ministries has reinforced its commitment to tackling mental health issues by signing a memorandum of understanding with the Ministry of Health at its headquarters in Kampala. This collaboration aims to share resources, raise awareness about mental health and promote accountability in resource utilization and promote accountability in resource utilization. According to Dr. Daniel Chabainze, Director of Public Health at the Ministry, this partnership will help address stigma surrounding mental health, particularly among religious leaders who are often the first point of contact for people seeking help. Thank you for accepting to partner with the government to execute your mandate. Amen. I, 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 mandate That's is beyond than what you want to start with, yes. and I say what you want to start with, but I've seen the mandate. Bishop David Michael Chaze, General Overseer of COP, emphasized that the collaboration will help tackle issues of stigma and encourage open conversations about mental health. Enabling our religious leaders to, to understand that mental health challenges can be to everyone and I think one way of destigmatizing this is to commonize it. Uh, we as leaders should share openly what we are going through so that people do not feel um, stigmatized when they share what they are going through. Dr. Chabainzi noted that mental health issues are prevalent even among high socioeconomic communities, where individuals often suffer in silence due to the stigma associated with, with mental illness. Um, we have recently seen media reports and confirmed that some people who we thought were mentally stable have committed suicide 
we've seen people who have gone into depression and withdrawn from public, and many reports of people who are stressed and depressed. These are all signs of mental illness, and these mental illness have all along been available. That's why we've had hospitals to treat them. But we think there is an escalation. One, either by increased sharing of information through social media, which wasn't available previously. Now we capture live things as they have. Recent studies indicate that one in four people suffer from mental health issues, which can be triggered by various factors, such as loss, poverty, drugs, and depression. Bishop Chazi encouraged the public to normalize open conversations about mental health, to avoid depression and potential mental health issues. In that sense that um, keep quiet, you do. But you know, we, 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 will, we will, and as we've been doing, encourage people to express themselves. And you know, it comes with education, it comes with teaching that people learn to release themselves and even dilute their cultural, cultural. COP ministry established in June last year aims to empower Christians through holistic ministry to Pentecostal and evangelical churches and organizations. Like a mobile was introduced in Uganda in 2022. President Museveni conveyed his appreciation for the positive impact of Laika Mobile Services in the country and commended the company for its achievements. Director of Industry Affairs and Content Development at UCC, Juliane Moheire, elaborates that the delegation's visit to State House in Tebe is to express their gratitude to President Museveni for the support provided to the company in launching its services in Uganda. Since commencing operations in Uganda in 2022, Laika Mobile has successfully acquired 1 million subscribers. Subhas Karan Arilaja, chairman of the company, has assured the president that they offer affordable services to all Ugandans. The meeting was also attended by the Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, Honorable Okero Oliem, who joined in the discussions. Police officer. And I know all of you love being police officers, isn't it? Do we love police? It is a very noble job of God because you are dealing with the people who are in distress. Someone who is a suspect, somebody who is a victim, somebody, I mean, doing community work. Name them, you know what we do. And really, it is so noble. And you should love the job which you are doing. When we get out, we are stressed. We, are, we come and we are in church and our burn. I love burn. And you know, if, even now I'm giving you 50,000. You go with it. So, you, 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 you should love the job. You are in FFU, quelling riots. You saw how the Kenyan police was working. So, you should love it. But as I said, Government, Uganda Police Force, they have very good plans for us. We started by giving double, I don't know, is it double? To the, to the scientists, money is increased. So, government has not left us out. It's increased salary. Government is working on the issue of uh, accommodation. It is still not good, but the information, I mean, the communication from the IGP. There are, there are better things ahead of us. So let us not tire to do good and continue working. And on his inaugural speech, he said that him alone cannot, cannot manage the Uganda police force, but he counts on each and every, every single police officer, from SPC to himself, for him he's a team leader. So if you don't do your work, then we fail together. So just maintain your discipline. And the rest is going to be story because we resolve as top management that every year we shall be promoting. Am I lying? It is coming every, each and every year. The other year, 2022, promoted. 2023, promoted. 2024, we already vetting. Are we not vetting?